Hey, Paul. Missed you. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a doc, uh, a Word doc, and have because um, I'm going to say stuff that I'm like I, I need to put and do a video on that. So um, let me move this over here. Let's make it really big font. Okay. Um, because I'm having thoughts about this subject and I'm like, I want to capture some of this stuff, so. Hey, Bruce. Bob Schumann, what's going on? Dead Man's Wife, hello, everybody. <laughs> AJ, David Sillers. Who, wait, did I miss somebody? I missed somebody, somebody up here. No, I did not, okay, cool. I'm just going to kind of hang out. We're going to hang out for a minute. So while I wait for a quorum to show up, you know, I like to get about 20 people in here before I really start digging deep into the subject matter at hand. Uh... Um. Yeah, so we're going to be talking about, I get asked about this. We've talked about this. You've been, ask, I've, you've been asking me about this. Um, and sometimes people, I, you know, they ask me this to, oh, you know, hey, how do I fill in between chords? Um, and that's kind of a, it's kind of a weird subject because it could be like, are you by yourself? Are you accompanying a singer? Like just the two of you? You know, you got to be careful because you got to keep the music going. But there are definitely things you can do. But what do you what do you consider a fill? Do you make, consider a fill to making a subtle change to a chord um, just to give you a little bit of diversity there in the in the harmony, so you're not like bored after you know if it's a very simple song and you're doing the same chords over and over again, or is it something you're you're wanting you know. like that where you want to fill in leading to another chord or whatever we're going to talk about that um too like uh over chords and between chords i'm hungry and i'm fasting so it's like oh <laughs> like my I have a hole in my stomach right now like oh man i'm gonna eat <laughs> so Ohio State still made the playoffs even though they got destroyed by Michigan. Well, they can get revenge then maybe, huh? Where's where's Sam? I don't have a horse in this race. My parents went to Michigan State. So, um, they they I don't know when the last time they if they ever won the national championship, but um Also, let me I forgot to check last week's dang it uh, lesson did, I'm sure there's a billion ads. Uh, monetization, management rules. Oh, no, cool. I was able to get to it quick. Okay, that's good. All right. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Hey, John, why? Hey, good, good, good to see you. No worries. Actually, I'm getting together with for dinner tonight with my uh, Louisville buddies that you know, we would go to Louisville to do music so it's uh, one of the guys birthday so we're gonna get dinner um, let's see well we're getting up there so so the idea of, a, of um, 
Yeah, it's that embellish, embellishments, riffs, fills, fills and riffs. Um, you know, f f riffs almost to me, it's like, this is such a big subject. Um, riffs almost to me, it would be like, instead of playing a chord, you play a riff. For example, like, instead of playing, it's like, instead of just playing banging an A chord, you might do something like, um, I think that's a riff. Or you might go, That's not a fill. A fill is something that happens. It's a shorter thing. Maybe it's it's happened maybe over a pause in the vocals, like or in the melody. If there's a gap in the melody, usually the singer. Um, I wonder if I get rid of that, I get a little less white in here. Uh, maybe a little bit better. Um, and uh, so if there's a gap, you know, then you could put a fill in there, and that might, you know, like. like that okay, where you take that little space I don't know if you want to do it every time that might get a little bit too obvious sometimes space is good you want to leave let let the lyric breathe um, you also want to make sure, and I always use the example of uh, uh, Dire Straits Sultans of Swing as a great example of fills that support the lyrics. You know, he, oh, uh, Guitar George, he knows all the chords. Right? <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you've ever noticed that, um, uh, but uh, if you listen to some of the, you know, if you listen to some of the riffs as they relate to the lyric, and keep in mind, uh, Mark Knopfler singing and playing the riffs, so it, it's really obvious to him. It's not like you're just a band member and you're like, oh, what's the singer singing? I'm not paying attention to the singer. I know he's singing, but I don't know the words he's singing. I don't really care, and I'm just going to do a fill. No, when Knopfler's doing fills on Sultans of Swing, he's very aware of, you know, when dinner bell ring or whatever, he says something about the ch church bell ring or he goes like that, you know, so it's... I think it's. I think that's kind of cool. That, but that also could be bordering on what com film composers and TV composers call Mickey Mousing, right? Um, you know, if somebody's falling down the stairs, you do a. <laughs> you, you know, it, it, you, you don't want to get the, like Mickey Mousing was something that was done in. Uh, oh no! It was done. You know, in the early days of you know, if someone's falling down. You know, someone's, like that kind of stuff, falling down the stairs or whatever. You don't really do that so much anymore. That's kind of looked down upon by most composers. Um, it's called Mickey Mousing. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, you almost got to be careful when you're doing those kind of fills. It could get a little bit, you know, uh, a little dorky. You know, like if, if you were doing, if someone wrote, you're playing a Christmas song and, and someone, you know, someone says, um, uh, the lyric is something like, and we sat around the campfire singing Jingle Bells. You went, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that would be like, I think that would be considered Mickey Mouse. And you want, might want to avoid, avoid a fill like that. All right. So like I said, this is a huge subject and it's, it's almost like you, I could do a dissertation on this subject for every song ever written. <laughs> so, because every song's gonna have a different feel, every song's gonna have a different uh, uh, key, different chords, so that we our approaches will change based on the chords. Um, but one of the things I, I, I kind of want to hit on is the, you know, some of the some of the main things is one of the things is if you are just accompanying a singer, you really got to make sure you're keeping the song going. You cannot have um, your embellishments, fills, and riffs stop the flow of the song. Really, really important that you don't lose the groove. You can't lose the groove. If you're, you know, um, and I've said this, I thought, hey, hey, Brad, good to see you. Um, I've said this 
you know, many times when we talk about the blues, before you should ever play one blues solo, one blues lick at all, you should be you should play a blues progression, a 12-bar blues progression. You should be able to play it 10 times in a row without making a mistake. You should probably play it a thousand times through the progression uh, without a mistake. Not necessarily in a row, that would be impossible. But um, because the blues progression is kind of an unusual progression, uh, it doesn't lay out like your normal song. Um, and what happens is um, you're accompanying someone and they're trying to solo and you screw up the progression and now they're just going to be frustrated and they're not going to want to jam with you if you can't play the blues all the way through without messing up. And again, like I said, you should be able to do it 10 times in a row without messing up. Um, and that's would be the case for any song that you're working on with an artist, uh, with a, with a singer, you know, I, I, my brain's going to completely fry here. I'm not going to be able to think of a song. Um, but you know, uh, but I'm just going to make up a song. And so, uh, you know, we've got this A song. And see, that right there is an embellishment. What I just did there with the A chord, where I took off the my pinky in this case and opened up that second string. That's an embellishment. Um, I wouldn't call that a riff or a fill necessarily, but that's a chord embellishment. So again, I'm breaking this up into kind of three sections. Chord embellishment is something you do to the chord to uh, to make it a slightly different chord, okay? If you were to really write it out and tab it out or whatever, you might have to put a different chord name there. Like I might have to go A, A2, A, you know, if you really wanted to be particular about what chords are being played. Um, same thing with D. If I'm going D, D sus, D, D2, okay? That would be chord embellishments. We're going to talk about that. That's part of this. And again, this is going to be a multi-part series. Hey, Gary's a perfect perfect person to, to he probably utilizes all of this stuff um, uh, your chim, chim, what's that? No, Chimera? Having fun with my Chimera. But yeah, but Gary performs a lot solo, so it's him accompanying himself. So it's a little bit more difficult to um, do a lot of these kind of things if you're singing at the same time. Um, but it also, some of these things may just happen naturally. Now, you have to be careful. One of the things you don't want to do is you don't want to, so if I'm in the key of A, I got the five chord, uh, D and E are the four and the five chord. So I can I can take off that second string note on the A chord, and, but I can't do the same thing with the, the note on the G string because I could, but it definitely makes this more of, you see, there's no A7 in the key of A. It's an A major seven. And that might not be a chord you want to go to either. Uh, that kind of sets up a whole nother sexy vibe that you may have in the middle of your songs. So you got to be really careful about, because if I do that A7, if that chord doesn't belong in that key. Doesn't mean you can't do it, okay? But the the implication or the tone or the the emotion that it sets is more of a bluesy rock kind of like, devil may care vibe if you throw that flat seventh which is what that a7 that that g open g would be now that wouldn't be a problem necessarily if i were in the key of d because the the, the a chord in the key of d has a dominant seventh if you, if you add the seventh so okay um so holly bruce good morning okay oh jack oh hey hey jack i'm sorry i gotta catch up on the Oh, 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 okay. A camera. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to get one of those. <laughs> My guitars are already heavy enough for me. Ooh, that's funny. So it's kind of like uh, the, the uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, J Jimmy Page, the Gibson. But you, you got an acoustic one.
Oh, yeah, that's right. You okay? You did an unboxing video. That's great. I'll check it out. Yeah, <laughs> John, that's the extent of your of your re repertoire is, is uh, jingle bells. Yeah, and you know, you get it when I say that would be an example of Mickey Mousing. If you you know, if the lyric says, "Oh, we sat around the fire and sang jingle bells," hey, Steve Barry. Um, I said hi. I said the hi to you, right, Brad? I got you, John. I said hi. Okay, we're good. I think I'm all caught up here. Um, yeah, you, you, you're probably not going to want to go. You know, <laughs> you could do. You could put it and fit it in there. Now, again, uh, one of the greatest songwriters of all time started her song with jingle bells. Such a great song. She's such a great writer. I mean, holy cow. I mean, she's got like, she has it all work, working for her. You know, she's got the lyrics that are just heartbreaking and she's got the melodies that are just breathtaking. And even her harmonies are, you know, her guitar chords, she will do so many weird tunings. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, I you can't even figure out a song because you're like, what, wait, what, what tuning is that? And she's a real musician. And she's, you know, not afraid of real... She toured with Tom Scott Band and, like, jazz players and stuff like that. But Joni Mitchell is one of my favorites. Um, so, um, but let's start with kind of the, the easier thing, and that is chord embellishments. Um, we, we, we're going to spend some time on this. So this may be multiple weeks. Um, and so every chord has certain embellishments that, are, that lay naturally, and we can start with those. And then also fills, and we're they're basically, I, I would say there are two types of fills, all right? But this each, both types could be billions and billions of fills. So it's not like it's simple to break it down. But there's fills over chords, and there's fills between chords or leading from one chord to another. So the difference might be I might go... Be, those would be little licks and fills over one chord. But if I was, I might do something similar like that. If I were going to a G chord, I might do. See, you know, I did. And that would be a fill that, that I would use to transition from D to G or something. Uh, most of the times I'm just improvising that. I'm just kind of making it up as I go. I don't, sometimes it's easier to get to that well. That's a long path to get to a point where you can just kind of naturally do those kind of things and come up with something different every time without even thinking about it. But I found that oftentimes if I go, okay, I want to do fill number 72 right now, I'll mess it up because I'm like, I'm thinking specifically that I want to do it. It's with, you know, the best stuff you'll ever do is when you're in the zone. And the, the, the best way to, you know, the, you can, you can, if you keep it simple, you can get in the zone quicker, right? So in other words, if your level of ability is here, um, you know, down here, you could probably easily get in the zone. If you're trying to play beyond it, you're probably not going to be in your zone so much. Um, so if your level of ability is here, your zone range is much wider. Um, and so that's why you want to have, obviously, as much skill, skill sets, as, as many skills as possible. Um, and then um, your your range for that zone. And it, when you're in the zone, it's almost like you're not thinking at all. It's what Steve Lukather told me that Larry Carlton told him, and that was, don't think, play. And, you know, that's a lesson I've never truly deeply learned. 
Um, but I had a good time this past weekend doing a session um, where it was basically two days in this big house and we were just a bunch of musicians and we we're just sitting around and we we're tracking um, everything. It was kind of like a, it was like 50s and 60s um, Nashville vibe. So I was doing some, you know, I was doing some uh, Travis picking on a song, you know, that kind of stuff. We were doing a bluegrass tune. So I got to play some bluegrass. Um, we were doing uh, kind of the 50s kind of... That kind of vibe too. So it was a lot of fun. And uh, it, was, it was all about finding a part that fit with everybody, what everybody else was doing. And uh, or kind of mostly just stayed out of the way. That was kind of the key. Um, is really just stay out of the way, but but give them something they can use. And they're tracking all these instruments at the same time, and then they'll go back later and go, okay, we'll keep this and get rid of this. And everybody was everybody was isolated enough. Um, I think the the Glockenspiel might show up in a lot of microphones. We'll see. I don't know. You should never put a Glockenspiel in a room. <laughs> Glocken Glockenspiel. What does that spiel? Glockenspiel. <laughs> Glockenspiel. Um. Oh, sorry, I'm reading Gary's acoustic goes plays on the 18 strings with the humbucker on the six. Oh, okay, I'll check it out. It's on the um, quilted maple carbon fiber. How is it wood or is it carbon fiber? I'm assuming it's carbon fiber, but made to look like quilted maple. But yeah, you could you could do something where you have you could even do like a drop tuning, like a, a drop drop D tuning or something, uh, or D standard, sorry, um, on the twelve string, so that you could have a you go to the twelve string if you want to. Play G, but have it actually be an F chord, so you can sing a little lower. If something's getting a little high, so you could do something like that. Um, I can see having two six-string necks, too, but yeah, I don't perform much, so I don't. You know, I just need a guitar in my hand. Um, uh, I read an article in the Washington Post this morning. YouTube announced earlier this year that between they paid out 30, 30 billion to, yeah, content creators. Yeah, well, I mean, YouTube wouldn't exist if there weren't content creators, right? So they better, or if they don't, and that's why they have, that's why, and, and you know, <laughs> YouTube, YouTube makes a, something like, I think the YouTube creators sold it for one and a half billion to Google, and they made, now, they now make one and a half billion every six weeks or something like that. So run the numbers, how long YouTube's been around. Um, but yeah, 19 to 21, that's pretty good. I think it's every, actually it's every 10 days they make a billion and a half. What was paid for the company they make in every 10 days. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Uh, but it, it is, it is simply an advertising model. Um, and advertising will always be a thing. And it always be, um, uh, I guess, needed. Um, I could advertise. You know, I could pay Google money to advertise my channel. Um, I've I've never done that. Um, I could do the same thing with Facebook. Facebook's kind of cool because it's very targeted. If I were still teaching guitar lessons, I could target, you know, junior high and high school kids in my neighborhood with ads about guitar lessons. Um, and the reason junior high and high school kids is because they tend to stay with you all the way up until they go to college. And so you've got a student that you may have a student for anywhere from three to six years. Um, so it's, it's, it's really smart to get, get, uh, kind of advertise in, in the local schools if you can, uh, for students. But anyway. <laughs> um, so. 
Okay, so let's talk about some chord embellishments. We do, we can just start with the C. We'll go. We'll do the caged chords first. We'll start with the five major chords: C, G, D, A, and E. And I don't really have any um, plan or anything. I'm just going to kind of come up with whatever I come up with. Okay. So the first thing you can know is like, let's just assume when we're playing these chords, we're in that key. So in the, for the C chord, we're in the key of C. So I, I might avoid the C7 because C7 would be the key of F. So I won't use C7, but I could use C major 7, okay? But again, a major 7th chord implies a real um, emotion that you may not want to apply in the song. You know, if it's a blues tune, you're not going to want to go to a... Uh, if it's a blues tune, you can't do the C7. Uh, so that's that's my, you know, that's one thing, exception there when you're doing a C7 in the key of C. Um, you can do all seventh chords when you're doing the blues, dominant seventh chords, it's totally fine. We've talked about that in the past. Um, so there is no single tonal center in a typical blues. But um, but in the key of C, you know, if the song's a heavy song or if it's a dark song or if it's a, a even like I said, a bluesy song, you're not gonna wanna go that C major seven. But you could hammer on that. So take your C and take off your first finger, hitting one on the downbeat one and I'm basically as quick as I can I'm hammering on that C that might be a 16th note da, 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 da. yeah it's a 16th note so if I hit those would be uh, four 16th notes You've been pretty good. I hope so. Okay, so that would be one little thing you could do. You could go. You know, the nice thing about the C major seven is it has that B note in it, and that's kind of wants to, to go to that F chord. So if your next chord is F, you could go. Sounds like um, Imagine, right? Um, and so, uh, but yeah, that's that might work. Um, you could also the C, the, the major seventh, it kind of implies almost a G over C. So you could use that as um, instead of going to the G chord. Say the song is. what I did there was I went C, G over C, F over C, and then back to C. Um, and so that implies the whole G, F, C harmony, but keeping the, the C note in the bass. And that's a nice little embellishment you can do um, to imply the chord progression all while staying on a C chord. You could do it even simpler than that. You could... going like C to C major 7 to C sus to, to C and that kind of pseudo almost implies a C G F C um, and and that would be kind of nice if you want to change up the song a little bit say maybe in the second core verse or if there's a breakdown chorus or whatever so those are kind of things <coughs> you, you just kind of experiment with now I also did a thing on the C chord where I Probably the most common embellishment over a C chord is hammering on your second finger. So I'm opening up the D string and I'm creating essentially for a, a moment in time, I'm creating a C2 chord. So there I did uh, hammered on the, the uh, two to three, and then I went to the G string and I hammered on the A there, so that creates kind of a 6-5 a suspension, which you know as, right? But it doesn't sound like that, just the way, because of the style I'm playing, is kind of almost a folky or bluegrassy or country style. 
Now the thing is, when I do that, when I'm hammering on that A note on the third string, on the G string, I'm trying not to hit the D string, okay? So I'm making my C chord a little three string chord like this. You can practice that. You can just play C chord like this. Probably the first C chord you ever learned was that one. Or, well, if you did Alfred's basic guitar method like me, you did. And then hammer on that A note. So, because the reason is if you, see if I hammer on that and I hit the D string with it, it's going to kind of imply almost a D7 chord. You don't want to imply a chord that's not in the key or that's not going to harmonically be correct for the song. Another one you can do is you can do the F, the F above the E. I like this one a lot, especially if you hit that, <coughs> excuse me, the open E string. Duty calls. Oh no. You'll rewatch E tonight. <laughs> okay. Mm. Uh, but how do you determine which notes to use for embellishments? Uh, yeah, it's just trial and error, man. You just you just gotta mess around. That's part of the reason why it's fun to play with other people. Um, because so if you can jam with another guitar player, you can guys you can sit down and practice. Um, and when I say guys, I it's it's the unisex guy. <laughs> it's like all you guys. Um, you can sit down and uh, play. Um, uh, you know, one of you can be more solid and the other one can kind of embellish more and then you can switch. Um, that way you don't lose track of the progression. That's, again, the number one thing is don't, don't do anything that's going to mess up your progression. If the song is, you know, four beats, four beats in each chord, or I can do even like A minor, the standard one six four five progression you know the 50s it's still being used today though obviously um you don't want that to to come to pause to hesitate at all because somebody is singing on top of it or playing on top of it and you don't you want them to be able to do their job actually they're kind of your boss if you're playing a singer with a singer you can think of them as being your boss you want to make them look good all right that's job one. And then once you've got that established, once you have the song nailed, then you can start make, adding little things. Um, and as far as what to do, yeah, that's just, you just trial and error. Like, for example, you might go, uh, you know, on the A, go into the, the 1645 progression, I might. work that was too pretty but that, it might work if you like okay I, that worked and now I want to do the same thing to the A chord this sounds like dust in the wind <laughs> and again I, I flubbed right there and that would be a time where you'd be like oh dang it I flubbed and that you know just but even if you make a mistake, if you flub up, sorry, flub is my word for making a mistake, or clam is another word. But if, if you uh, if you make a mistake, just keep the groove going, though. Don't worry about it. If you're not quite on that C note in the bass, you know, you know, don't don't hesitate. Keep the groove going. really almost hard to do it's really hard to do when you're by yourself if you got a band with you it's almost like yeah <laughs> you don't have a choice you kind of keep up you can't like if you drop a beat meaning you add a beat to the uh to the measure you can't stay a beat behind the rest of the band but if you're by yourself you could totally stay you know it's like oh man i added a beat now you know now what am i gonna do um and we you know we've all done that so okay now hey jan what's going on i just saw you join um, 
Not a loaded question, though, and John's working now. John's a dentist, so he's probably giving someone some Novocaine right now. Um, so... Um, what are some other things? So yeah, that, that I like that sus thing, and you can kind of create that kind of vibe. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing a C chord, and I'm adding my pinky right below my third finger on the fourth string, making that a C sus chord to C, taking off my first finger, going, making it technically a C2 chord. Again, if we were to analyze everything and write a chord above every chord, you know, a chord name above every chord strummed, it would be pretty messy. It would be C sus, C, C, D, C. And sometimes you want to do that when you, if it's really part of the song. I think of, um, you know, Anticipation by Carly Simon. That's literally literally part of the composition of the song. It, would, it wouldn't it would feel right if you didn't do that. So when you have to notate that in the music, you have to go, it's D sus D, D sus D, D sus D, D, D two D. All right? So it's like, you gotta scribble that in. You might have to like stagger the chord names so you can fit them all in. So um, I think we, did we learn that? That was one of our mystery songs, wasn't it? I forgot about it. We did that. Only, only once did we have to demonetize, and that was for the Pink Floyd song because I played the exact part that my friend Joe DeBlasi actually wrote and never got credit for. I even spelled his name wrong on the album as a guitar player. I called him Ron DeBlasi. It's like, Ron DeBlasi? <laughs> what the heck? Um, so, um, so C chord, yeah, there's some stuff there. The... So another thing we can do would be very more kind of in the bluegrassy, folky uh, country range. It might be... So I'm hitting the bass note. Ba even the bass chord thing can be considered a, an embellishment. Bass chord. Boom. Check. And there I'm just playing C and then the, the C note, which is the fifth string. Strum the chord, maybe aim for the top three strings, maybe get the fourth string, whatever. But you know, don't be don't be too precise about it. You know, just you want to vibe. Sometimes it does it sounds better if you don't hit that E string. Um, when I was doing this weekend on the session, I was like I wasn't always going to the top string. Uh, because I didn't want to hear that high note. I just like the the sound of the you know, lately I've been playing like bar chords, instead of playing the bar chords, I'm just playing the part in front that, that's not the bar, right? So like here's like F. I've been playing that for F sometimes, and then this would be G minor and A minor. I like the sound of those. So it's like, let the bass player play the low. And that's this is has nothing to do with this. But anyway, uh, that's more about creating a part. That's a whole nother 500 video series. <laughs> 500 videos um, but this I'm going from the root here on the C note to the fifth and that gives a decidedly country flavor to it but you could also try that one so I'm playing third uh, so I'm playing the C note hitting that then strumming the chord and then I'm taking my second finger off of the D string and hitting it open and hammering on. And I could either just hit the G string. And if I were doing that, I would probably hit that G string with an upstroke, just so that I'm kind of sending my pick in the direction of the bass note. Is it the Heinz? Anticipation, yeah. Now that I'm playing just the one, the G string. You could play a chord, dude. And that's definitely kind of a, you don't have to do that every time you play a C chord. 
that might be the vibe of the song. So if you were doing kind of a old school country vibe. <laughs> same lick available to you, the F word. Um, but it also could be used as kind of a one-off. So you're playing... You know, I kind of put it in there to fill in maybe the... There was a pause in the lyrics, and then I just did that little lick. And it's almost, I will do it almost without thinking. It's not something I really ever plan. And the same thing's true with the... limited on the F chord because it's a bar chord. We don't really have any available fingers or available open strings. Um, I may show you some bar chord fill, you know, that might be a time where you actually do a, what I would call a fill, which would be kind of a group of notes that's a, that's that are away from the chord, not necessarily outside the chord, um, but the, you stop playing a chord to be able to play a fill, okay? So, you know, that might be... To, if, like if I was if I was playing a lot of F chord in a song, I would kind of come up with something I could use. A lot of times I'll play like this F chord with just the top strings, so that I have. So like I might go. So I kind of have an open F chord. It's like an F two chord. I could put the pinky on top and get that G, the, another two, so I end up with two at two twos. <laughs> a two two. Uh, I have F, G, C, and G. There's actually no third in there, but there, there it is right there. See, and that, that was embellished, chord embellishments and fills all in one. Chord embellishment. would be a fill technically okay because I did it was like okay I stopped playing the chords and I'm just doing oops C chord okay so um, so that would be an example of maybe um, how you could combine embellishments and fills and that's seven more lessons <laughs> I don't know uh, I don't know what I'm getting myself into here but uh... <laughs> all jokes aside the best tasty ketchup or cat's up <laughs> They are ketchup, um, right? All others are cats up. So Heinz is ketchup. No, you got to be careful because uh, <laughs> I get distracted very easily. And we could spend the next two hours talking about ketchup. So, um, okay. So uh, the, the G chord, we go to uh, the cage breath. Oh, cage. I guess I could go to A chord. Now I'm going to go to G because I'm going to go in order of sharps. So the key of C has no sharps or flats. Let's go to the G chord. Just come up with a few little tricks. Um, this is by no means was it anywhere a complete uh, analysis of the C chord and all its possible riffs and embellishments and fills. Okay, not at all. Um, but um, go to G chord and again in a little bit I'll I'll tell you again the difference between embellishments, fills, and riffs in my head. Okay. These are not, like, you can't, you won't be able to necessarily prove my point with Wikipedia. <laughs> okay? All right. So, all right. So, the, um, uh, the G chord. Again. 
again, the most common embellishment might be the that sus. So I'm adding my first finger. So I'm kind of playing a, a three open string G chord. I'm going third finger on the bottom string, second finger on the fifth string, open, 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 and then top string, pinky. All right? Um, now, here's the thing about this. If you just do that and leave your second finger on the B note, Technically, that's what I would call a G4 chord. It's a G chord, G triad, G, B, D, with the fourth added, the C. So a lot of times, if I'm going to add that C, I'll take off my second finger and mute the fifth string with my third, my third finger. <laughs> right now, people are doing screen grab, screen grab. Okay, so my third finger is the kind of the flesh, the fatty part here of my third finger is, is, is deadening that A string. Okay. You can practice doing that. Just, just pl play one strum of each. A G, G sus. G, G sus. And that's God's favorite chord. God the Father's favorite chord. <laughs> okay. G sus. All right. Now, Again, if I had both of them on there, it would be a little bit more uh, tension, a little bit more interesting, you know, a little bizarre, uh, but you might not even hear it because your ear is naturally attracted to this B, C movement here. If you're wondering what that clicking is, it's the buttons on my shirt. <laughs> Clackety click. Well, and also I'm using a very hard pick. Using a Wigan Gypsy Jazz pick. I just like the sound of it. Especially for a Okay. I just like the sound of it. Um, so, uh, the, yeah, so the G chord, that's one, maybe one of the first things you could do. The other thing you could do, you know, you could do the major seven thing. So if I'm playing a four finger G chord like this, then I might, you know. But again, the major seventh, anytime you add that major seventh tonality, it comes with it certain emotions that will work in maybe 50% of the styles of music, but won't work in the other 50% of styles. You know, and rock, it might be a little, uh, you know, I think of um, Kiss Me, where he, they actually go like that chromatically. Um, and that's, that technically I would call a riff. Um, and that actually is, we're in the key of D here, but once we go to that D7, technically we're in the key of G major, technically. We're in the key of G, G major. That's the five chord in the key of G. It's the only time a naturally occurring uh, D7 occurs is in the key of G. And I think it goes to the, it may go to G at that point. Um, and that's a very common musical device, the descending um, in minor key. You might hear it like... exact notes D C sharp C natural to G or to B so I'm just going it's the same okay um, but it's an, over a minor key so it ends up sound like feelings nothing more than feelings okay so with the G you know we've got that major seven we could go to the seventh down there but anyway we've got the major seventh Again, it might work, it might not work. But you'll notice when I was just doing that, I instinctively did that hammer-on. So the same hammer-on we did with C, which was the, the two to the three, okay, the two of the key the chord to the three of the chord. Keep in mind, there's three notes, and you know, don't worry, there won't be a quiz on any of these things. You can order this mug. <laughs> there won't be a quiz on this, um, on, on the theory aspect of this at all. Um, but the major chord is root third fifth, all right? One, three, five. Holy, holy, holy. Okay. Anyway, the first.
first three notes of Holy, Holy, Holy are the triad. Holy, Holy, Holy. That's how I sometimes help, helps me remember. Like if I'm Holy, Holy, Holy. Okay. I can find those triad notes just by kind of silently singing or in my head singing Holy, Holy, Holy. Now, um, if we do that in G, the, it's G, B, D. So that A note is the two. If we go up the scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So we're adding, we're adding that two. And notice I'm playing a three finger G chord. I could do it with this. Either one of those chords that work with might be easier for you with this because your first finger might be a little bit more of a dominant stronger finger than your second finger in fact a lot of times when people lift off their second finger they take their third finger off with it too or look at how my first finger moves when i move my second finger um, sounds more like a riff that little thing I don't know that I would use that in a song that has a G chord that almost sounds like its own song I might use it though I don't know it that might be that's kind of in the more fill range uh, so if I'm going you know, like G maybe it's a lead back into the top of the progression. Um, and so that's, um, and again, that when I did, okay, that, that's just a bass walk up. So that's kind of in the more like chord bass vibe kind of thing, but we, I could call that a fill. That's a fill. Remember, I said there are two types of fills, ones that are over chords and ones that are over transition between chords or takes you from one chord to another chord. And that would have been a fill, technically, that took me from D to G, right? And you eventually just start to develop these as you play a song. The more you play a particular song and get to know it so well, you don't have to think about it. You don't have to look at lyrics or chords or anything like that. You just know it so well. You'll, you'll start realizing there's something you could do there but you may not know what it is you may have to go you might, oh you might stumble on it go oh that's right and you might do it like get the timing wrong oh shoot i'm there too early you might get there early you might get there late oh no that was on time ah i'm getting there late you know and that kind of thing so your timing you may have to work out but again, it's almost in some ways, the less you think about it, the more likely you will be to land it correctly. And that would be that would be a fill from D to G. And we can talk about that also. We'll we'll talk about uh, transition fills. But we're still on just the G chord, trying to find some things we can do. Another thing I like to do, if I'm playing like this G chord with a four finger G chord, I, I sometimes will put my my uh, my first finger down here on the A note. Okay. People. It doesn't seem like we're having many people in the chat. Oh, we got a lot of people here. We got 35 people. It's like the same five people in the chat. Yo, tell me where you're from. I want to say I'll do a shout out to you if you just get in the chat a little bit and say hey. Uh, and 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 Bruce, don't don't yeah don't over welcome people <laughs> and scare them off like little mice. <laughs> okay, just let people kind of say hey I'm in Boston or hey I'm in I'm in. Uh, outside of Boston or, uh, or hey, I'm from the north, just north of Boston. <laughs> I wonder if I have anyone from Boston right now. That'd be funny. Um, but yeah, so that C, the, the two, adding the two to any chord almost works in any genre. It almost works over any chord progression. You're almost always safe. <laughs> yeah, I know where you're from, bro. Hey, Mamba. Um, so, uh, Paul, RV life, nice. Oh, come on, get out. Okay, that's freaking amazing. See, I'm so glad I asked you to do this. Cedar Park, Texas, nice. But the burbs of Austin. Oh, uh, you're in Kentucky. Hey, I'm going out to, to 
So is uh, the the uh, John T, uh, John the dentist is in, in Nash uh, Louisville. I love Louisville. It's one of my favorite cities. Uh, I played for the Muhammad Ali Humanitarian Awards every year until COVID, and uh, just really enjoyed going to some really good restaurants and we went to some bourbon bars and stuff like that. I'm not a drinker really, but I would have a glass of bourbon with everybody just because they they told me it was amazing and I'm like, oh okay, it hurts so much. <laughs> You know, I'm drinking. It's like, it burns, it burns. <laughs> and like about the third one, and I, you know, it's like, I am not a drinker. So like one is enough to kind of get me walking funny. Uh, three, I remember that the night I had three, I laid down on my bed. It was the first time I ever experienced the spinning room thing. I was like, okay, I better sleep on my side. Um, oh, hey, oh, Dan, hey, yeah, Shepherd of the Hills. Uh, G6. Okay, well, there's a few ways you can play G6, and that would be a good, okay, we have G major seven, right? G, if you just playing, if you're playing either either the three finger G chord like this and this, okay, notice I'm just, just different fingers, it's the same notes. Um, or if you play it like this, just open up that E string. So that's a G6 right there, technically. Now it's not very G6-y. <laughs> it's not a very 6 chord. Uh, if I'm playing it with a four finger, just take off that, take off that pinky, and that's a G6, and that would be an embellishment, or that would be, yeah, that would be a, an embellishment. Like a two, and then I could go to the six. You can also get the six by putting your second finger in, or first finger instead of on the A, okay? Put it on the, hey, Pepper. Uh, put it on the um, uh, on the D string at the second fret, and that's the E note. That makes it, that makes it a six. So that's another G6 you could do. I might go... Basically what I'm doing there is I'm playing G and then I'm moving my first finger down and getting that and here's one of the tricks I'm doing I'm with my third finger okay again with the third finger <laughs> I'm muting the E string okay so I'm only getting this note and I'm trying to mute that make sure that top E string is dead so I've got and then I'm going uh, uh, and then I go reach out it's a very difficult this is a little bit tough actually great exercise so I'm muting the A string also with my 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 third finger. I won't isolate that finger, but it's this one here. Okay. <laughs> Catherine's in the house. You got a speeding ticket in Louisville. I didn't drive. Well, no, I never drove in Louisville. It was all Ubers. Uh, Papa, over the water in the UK. Awesome. I love. I've only been to London. I've got to get back over there. My wife and I are hoping to go to. Um, Scotland next year. That's that's my hope. Um, so, so I'm deadening the A string and I'm deadening the high E string basically, and I'm the movement's all happening on the fourth string. I've got the open D, second fret which is the sixth, the the fourth fret which is the major seventh. And again, that might not work in a lot of different genres of music because that major seventh gives you a, a kind of a... But I could totally use it. It just gives you kind of a, a lilty, kind of happy, light feeling. And if the lyric is not that, or the melody is not that, you really may want to avoid that major seventh. It'll also be here. That's the major seventh. Inning. But then, like I said, there are about 50% of the genres you could probably get away with it. Um, but I might do something like that if I'm doing like, like a... If I'm going like G to C, I'm in the key of G. 
I might use that. And I'm just going to the C chord and I'm adding that same F sharp. Um, again, it's, that's a chord embellishment. I'm taking the chord and I'm adding something to it or doing something to it, but keeping the groove going. It's not a riff or a fill. A riff might be a riff. So here would be a riff using that, in my opinion, okay? So if I did this. That's, that's something you build on, right? Then you, somebody starts singing. something on just like you sing over that no problem um, if I use it as a fill it might look like this right where I'm just kind of hammering them on and kind of adding them willy-nilly that was way too busy and annoying and I would tick off any singer that I was playing with if I did did that, but I was just doing it for an example. Mooga mooga! What's going on, mooga mooga? Uh, I'm glad everybody's saying hey. Nobody from Boston, though. I'm kind of bummed. Um, so, or just outside Boston, or just north of Boston. Nobody from any of them. My sister lives just south of Boston. My little sister. Who's... <laughs> You know, it's weird when you, you're like, your little sister's 58. And you're like, wait, what? Or 57 or whatever. Yeah, 57. Okay. So, yeah. Um, so, that would be a chord, you know, some chord embellishments over G. The other one I would do is like, you know how we hammered on that second? I would also go up to the third. I love the sound of that. So, I might... G, I'm playing kind of four finger G chord, but I'm now I'm, I'm doing that thing where I'm kind of muting the A string because I'm taking my first finger off that B note. So I kind of kind of dead that deaden that A string, and I'm also kind of deadening the E string again. So really, ultimately, what I have here is what's called a G five G D G D G D G D. Um, in other words, root five root five. There's no third in there, and then I add the second, and then I go up to the third. Now I have technically a, a G triad in there. So now it is a technically a G chord. I can, do, I can do the same thing over the C. It's going to take some coordination, some practice. And so what I would do again, like I always say with practice, don't, don't sit here and go strum G for seven bars and then in the eighth bar try to do this. Okay? Just do one G, one G2. You know, one G5, one G2, one G, and a back. Strum each of these chords just once, because you, what you're practicing is the is the mechanics and the and the uh, the um, the dexterity to play it with your left hand. Um, you don't want to have to. You not you don't need to waste time. <laughs> We're not getting any younger here. Not let's not waste time. <laughs> nice. Lots of F major seven chords. Um. Yeah, I will not be doing lessons on drop two chords. I have really, really, really old lessons that uh, done with my old iMac camera. Um, and if you look up drop two chords, I think I did like 50 of those, uh, which I really like. Yeah, I use them all the time, um, particularly in jazz or when you're harmonizing, when you want to, you know, let's see, no. When you want to harmonize a melody for jazz, drop two chords are invaluable. Um, but that's a whole nother 
thousand lessons right there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, F major seven is is definitely kind of a go-to for in the key of C for the four chord. You know, trying to grab this whole thing, you can kind of get away. It's kind of a I would call it a pseudo cheater chord. Uh, and again, major seven is going to have a certain thing to it. And if you're doing blues. Major seven doesn't sound right in the blues, you know, it's like. <laughs> so it context is everything. All right. Uh, okay. So um, on the G chord. Yeah, it's. I, the other thing we did in the C chord, we hammered on and we went, we went to the six. The, we hammered on the three and we went to the six. We could totally do a G, very, very, very common. You can go all the way up. To, you can hammer on the three, you can hammer on the six, and you can hammer on the two if you want. But more common is, is just the hammering on the third. Or hammering on the six. sound country but it doesn't have to if it was like in a rock like a rock let's see what well, let me give me a now, Tom Petty used this kind of stuff we use that kind of stuff a lot too where he hammers on the That's the two. So I'm playing up kind of the four finger G chord uh, where I'm playing third fret on the top two strings. And then I, I, I'm adding this on here for the, for the, okay. So we've gotten to C and G. I'm not, I don't even know if I'm gonna get to the first five chords yet or not, but let's do D. What was some things on D? Again, the, the most common thing would be, and again, you're dealing with a chord that's only four strings. So you got some limitations here. D sus, add your pinky at the third fret of the first string. Go back to D and then take off that second finger and then put it back on. Uh, so we open E string, so it's like three, two, open two. There's a lot of songs. Um, and not just anticipation that use that D sus thing. Um, no, is it? Uh, and I would call that a riff, right? That's. It's not just playing chords. It's actually making it into something kind of freestanding. See, if I were going... It wouldn't have been as iconic. It just wouldn't have been. Because it's not... It's not it's, it, to pick out those notes individually makes it much more riffy. It's like... That's a riff. It's not... Eventually they go to that, right? Eventually once the song gets going. Um, love that A7. So, is that right? Yeah, it was the E chord. That is a, a great example of the Beatles kind of like ignoring the rules. They did this all the time to huge, the biggest success. So when I say, oh, you know, A7, it kind of implies you're in the key of, of D, so you better not do it in the key of A. Yeah, the Beatles just proved me wrong. Again, they go right to an E chord, which is the five chord in the key of, of A. And it's like, wait. Mm -hmm. 
yeah. right? So that's, you know, the rules are meant to be broken. And if it sounds right to you, do it. Uh, that's exactly what, I mean, that's what, you know, George Martin, you know, when he was trying to convince Paul that he had the wrong melody idea uh, for the strings on yesterday, and then Paul Paul said, this is how I hear it. But, it, you know, and George was like, George Martin was like, yeah, but harmonically it doesn't, it's it's not correct. And and music theory wise, and he, he admit, you know, he, he realized, I think that same day, George Martin realized, he says, yeah, I realized that Paul was right. It's not always about what's correct harmonically. It's like what propels, what, what continues to tell the story. And sometimes the story, you need, you need something uh, that's not normal to, uh, to kind of propel that story forward. So, okay. Oh, Chris Cornell, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's actually, yeah. You know, I think I used that song. I can't remember how it goes right now, but I do think I used that song as an example for that, for it was with a student or two. Um, yeah, so, so that's the most common embellishment. Okay, another thing you can do is... hammer on that that go to the open G which is kind of weird but you're only on that G note for a while this is would be technically a G major 7 over D or you could also call it maybe a D4 because we have a D not quite a full triad because there's no A in here but we have a D and an F sharp and a G so you get that you get that rub of that F sharp and the G which I love this would be another, if you just take a C chord up two frets, this is another example of a D4 chord, middle four strings. And anyone who learns a C chord almost invariably slides it up and goes, oh, oh, that's beautiful. You know, because it is. <laughs> but over the D. Uh, but more common for me is to hammer on this. It be, I, I would kind of think of this as the... Um, uh, Norwegian wood lick or whatever, right? Now keep in mind, um, that kind of almost implies a little bit of a G chord that's like B minor over G, but so does the sus. So you could go back and forth of like you were going. So I would just practice this right now. I know it's not natural feeling, getting that pinky out there and, and also getting that pinky and having the top two strings ring out. If you're having trouble with that, just get the pinky on there and pluck each note individually. You know, I don't want to hear this. note like this like a little riff okay so that kind of implies a G over D and then if you go if you go to this I'm playing open D second fret which is a second fret which is that uh, C sharp and open E that's a kind of, that's basically you could call it a D major nine chord but I would think of this as more of an a over D. I think it's the top three notes of an A chord, but with a D in the bass. And so that implies the five chord. So you could, you could instead of going, you know, there may be a time where you want to break it down, right? So we do this. The song is... I've got, I get big, big country strong here, but... I could even go. So I'm going D, G over D, D, A over D. Okay. And that's, a, again, that's what we talked about dynamics last week. That's a way you can use embellishments to create a dynamic, uh, to lower dynamics um, in this case. 
And, um, and so that G over D chord I did was basically I just play a D chord, add the pinky like I'm doing a D sus and take off the first finger. You can leave your second finger there if you want, um, just so you're ready to go. Yeah, stretch pinky stretch, exactly. Yeah, don't, don't, go, don't do like two bars of D and then go to D2 or D6. So that's also a D6 chord. You call it B minor over D. You call it D6. Either either would be correct. Um, but just go, just do this. One strum each. Just do that. Get, get that there. And another thing I do is I, I say, take your hand off and kind of do this. Kind of try to get your hand to forget it and then remember it. Take your hand off. Kind of do that with your fingers. So that's especially helpful if you're doing like grabbing like jazz chords. You want to, you know, I want to be able to grab a chord quickly and I take my hand away, you know, and I take my hand away and I try it again. If I'm learning a new shape, uh, something that should fit in my hand. Yeah, grow pinky, grow pinky. Oh yeah, imagine imagine doing this. It's like that's it. That's it, no, we're gonna do oh, That's the song that probably grew my pinky the most. <laughs> I'm going to grab that stupid chord. And over this one, the F minor, I couldn't. I had to bounce my first finger. That's it. Was it? Oh, that's right. guitar from YouTube videos. The issue is I follow step-by-step -step process, but I still haven't found such a playlist to learn accordingly. Uh, would you please come up with such a playlist? Thank you. Well, I have videos out there. You can look it up. Basically, what you're going to want to do is you're going to you're going to want to kind of go on a, a easy to difficult arc. You're not going to want to start with like, uh, here's the quiz. You know, you you could take a playlist like top 100 rock songs and you, you could be, never get past song one because it's like they're all going to be some of them are going to be really hard um, what you want to do is to try to organize the songs from easy to hard so you can look up easy rock so it depends on what kind of genre you want to play but let's just say rock easy rock guitar songs um, or you can learn easy versions of songs um, a lot of times people will learn an, a, a simplified version of a song and then later go back and learn the proper, the full version once they have some skills. Um, but yeah, I, you, the, the number one thing you have to do is fight discouragement. And then the number two thing you have to do is you have to encourage yourself to want to pick up the guitar. So um, if you're not playing every day, um, you're probably not going to get any better. Um, so, you know, they were talking about the 10,000 hours. Um, and I had a, you know, pretty consistent eight hour a day routine I did from the age of 15 to 35. Well, let's just assume I did that every day. That would be 58,000 hours, six times more 10,000 hours. I don't think 10,000 hours is anywhere near enough to be an expert, but they say, Oh, if I put 10,000 hours in, no, that's, that's, it has nothing to do with it. You could be an expert in 100 hours on some things. Uh, but on guitar, I don't know that, I mean, I'll never consider myself an expert. However, um, so I've done three videos now that I have three videos you can look up. Um, I can even find them for you, but three videos where I talk about, you know, five songs with only two chords. So that's 15 songs right there. If you kind of learn those, you can learn the basics of 15 songs 
using only two chord shapes and I don't use, it's not the same two chord shapes. So you're learning different chord shapes um, as you learn these 15 songs. So that is, a, a, it's foundational thing. You gotta build that foundation. You gotta, just like you're building a building, you don't start with the top floor, you start with the bottom floor. Uh, you start with the basement. You gotta build the foundation. So that's what I would um, try to do. Now, has somebody already done that? Maybe. Um, let me search here. I, I can find five songs. Yeah, there we go. All right, whoops, no, I gotta go back here. Five songs, five songs. Five songs. Okay, now can I? All right. All right, here's one. This is number three. Uh, so this one has Tulsa Time by Eric Clapton, I Melt With You by Modern English. Eleanor Rigby by the Beatles, and there, uh, Therefore I Am by Billie Eilish, and Season of the Witch by Donovan. All right. Uh, if I go back here, five songs. All right. Copy. Here's another one. And I'm self-promoting here, but... Um, Oh, that's awesome, Catherine. Um, are you seeing difference? Okay, this one has Dreams by Fleetwood Mac, Born in the USA by Bruce Springsteen, Feeling All Right by Joe Cocker, Break On Through by The Doors, and Blurred Lines by Robin Thicke. Don't watch the video. <laughs> well, there is a video there. I think I did the, the PG-rated video. Um, okay, and then I have one more. Um, and again, I tried to kind of spread it out over decades, so it's not all songs from the 60s and 70s that with only two chords. I try to make sure that I, I had a kind of a broad range of appeal. It's always good to learn songs from every generation or every decade, um, just so you don't like um, get kind of stuck in a rut of only liking songs that you grew up listening to. Um, okay, so this one is the first one I did. And uh, let's see. Force with No Name by America, What I Got by Sublime, Sublime, Everyday People by Sly and the Family Stone, Hakey Breaky Heart by Billy Cyrus, and Jane Says by Jane's Addiction. Again, a pretty good cross-section of styles and decades. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, it's tough. And again, you know, my seven tips for older beginners, I say, look, just just keep, a, keep a guitar out available. You, if you've got kids, you can get a high wall hanger and put it up there, but it's, it's right there. You can see it. So it, it might guilt you into picking it up, and that's okay. Um, and then uh, the other thing is, um, you know, if you, just, if you just think, okay, I'll pick it up for five minutes a day. Um, I know you're going, well, that's not good. I know it's not really. Five minutes a day is not enough. But if you go, okay, I'm going to practice an hour today. Every day I'm going to do an hour on the guitar. You're probably not going to do five minutes a day because you're going to go, oh, shoot, I don't have an hour for my guitar practice. I've got to pick up the kids from school or i got to take them to blah, 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 and this kind of thing. You know, So, yeah, you're just going to be on your phone watching movies while <laughs> your kid's going to a ballet lesson or something. I, it's, you, you just got to pick it up for five minutes because that five minutes can turn into 10 minutes and 10 can turn into 15 and so on. Um, and you know, what do you do in that five minutes? If you're only at five minutes, maybe just finger warm ups, just anything to kind of get your fingers going and, and build that dexterity so that when you ask a pinky to go here on the fourth fret of a D chord, um, it might be able to do that. If you've got some dexterity lessons, uh, dexterity things. And I've got some lessons on that as well. Finger exercises. Uh, we've talked about those quite a bit. So I would, I would definitely try to, um, uh, get the guitar in your hands five minutes. And again, like I said, You'd be surprised. You might get to an hour uh, just thinking, oh, I, I just pick it up for five minutes. I really don't feel like I'm kind of tired. So come from where I just want to, I just want to sit down and watch some Netflix or something. Right. Um, and so, um, by the way, I was, I, I did a sideline last week um, on a TV show called Hacks. Anybody ever seen Hacks? I can't talk about the scene necessarily, but um but it was a it was a long day. I mean, I got up at five, 
and I I was it, it we were at the, st the studio lot by eight, and I didn't get done until eleven thirty that night. So it was a long day. Um, but Hacks is an HBO show, and it's really good. Beth and I because I never heard of the show. Um, we binged the first season before I went and did the show, so it was pretty fun. And um, uh, Jean Smart, the main actress in Hacks, came up to uh, the the band that was playing. She came over and talked to us for a while, and I told her how much her, my wife and I liked the show, and she was really happy about that. So it was good. I, yeah, I'm sure she gets lots of kudos, that kind of stuff. But <clears throat> um. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, you know, you you be, be you got to start somewhere, but you can't start at the top. You think of think of it as as Michael, think of it as building a house or building a skyscraper, okay? The guys the guys that you you want to emulate, the guitarists that you want to emulate, you know, I don't know who who we're talking about here, maybe you know, Joe Satriani or Steve Vai or whatever, uh, Eric Johnson or Jimmy Page or whoever. I mean, I'm just going with the standard top guitar players. Um, you're, they're, they're on the 40th, 50th, 60th, 70th floor. You can't go up there. <laughs> you're not allowed up there. <laughs> you got to start at the basement and you build those foundations. Um, you know, if you're really into rock, you know, yeah, then you want to learn, you know, learn Iron Man, learn Smoke on the Water. I know as trite as that is, you know, start to learn, um, uh, some Zeppelin riffs. Don't necessarily have to learn the whole song. Okay. Guitar players are famous for not finishing songs. <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll get at the campfire and we'll play the riff, okay? You know, like uh, uh, Black Dog, right? But no, nobody wants to hear the whole song Black Dog, but some people will be like, well, you didn't finish the song. You never finish any song. It's like, yeah, if I learned an entire song and, and really got it down or whatever, so you could, are you going to sing all the lyrics? What's the point? If you don't, you know, and I'm just telling you the the mental, the the typical mental um, thinking of guitar players is, yeah, I just want to learn the riff and then move on, and that's okay because all of the all of your favorite guitar players did that. Very few of your favorite guitar players learned the entire song unless they were playing it with a band. They learned the thing they needed to learn and then they moved on because there are some songs, you know, that like. Um, uh, you know, right? The, just that would be one of the first songs you could learn is is uh, um, whatever. I forget how it goes now. My brain's not working. But then it's like. know how to play power chords so you don't need to spend time learning and jamming on the power chords you're like okay now what's the next zeppelin tune i can learn once you you know, learn uh, something you, you get the thing you need the thing that you don't already know then you add to that okay and that's how you build up from the basement and work your way up to the top floor you have to build on it but <laughs> uh no they're neither uh it's a it, it, she's a comedian Jean Smart was in uh, Designing Women, and uh, she's like, she kind of is a pseudo, uh, we'll talk about the TV show Hacks, uh, it's on HBO, um, and I did a sideline on it Thursday, so, but it's episode one of season three, so you won't see it until they drop season three, and I don't even, you know, I've done these before where you see my, the headstock on my guitar or whatever, but it was a long day, and we got a lot of different angles, and it was a point where like, well, I can't, I can't talk about it, so anyway. Um, but the, the premise of the show is that um, Gene Smart's kind of this, oh, Phyllis Diller, jo Joan Rivers type comedian who's been doing, you know, 30 years in Vegas, um, you know, doing, have, have a, 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 she's got a, a room in Vegas that she does her show and um, they, uh, um, uh, and so it's not. It's, she's the uh, owner of the, this is the first episode, the owner of the casino wants to cut her back to like only weekdays only, like take away the weekends, right? And um, so she's bummed about that and she calls her agent and gets all mad at the agent. And the agent says, well, maybe you need a writer to help you get some more punchier, more contemporary jokes or something like that. 
and he's got this writer who just got fired this young girl that's a writer and she just got fired because she tweeted the wrong thing so she got canceled and uh so she's she's completely she just bought a house in la she completely lost her job and everything and she doesn't have anything and so she goes to vegas begrudgingly to write for this comedian who doesn't want to write her so it's kind of the two of them and their relationship largely and i i, I kind of you know two of my favorite type stories are the the fish out of water story i love fish out of water stories and the peeling the onion story and it's got both of those things kind of working together so um it yeah it's 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 a cool show it's fun to be part of the cool show so you who knows if you'll see me i hope you do um uh let's see put up put up so that's that premise and so if you end up um if you end up um oh and another thing michael as soon as you can get in a band or start jamming with other people um, you know, you will get better faster. And I'm sure there's some people here that can testify to this. You will get better faster when you're jamming with others. If you could set up a weekly jam with other guitar players, just to get together, even with just acoustic guitars or little amps or something, you know, somebody's house, um, the fear of making a complete fool of yourself, you could even say, Hey, let's learn, let's work, work on this song beforehand and let's try to bring it together. So see if we can all play black dog. Um, that kind of thing, um, that would be a great way to get better. The other thing too, if you, you know, if you have the money to take private lessons, if you can afford it, um, if you find a good teacher that you can, that you really, um, I had some students that got really good, you know, and I could almost couldn't teach them fast enough. Uh, but invariably they were young. They were junior high, high school age. They're like freaking sponges and they have all technically kind of all the time in the world. I mean, I know they've got studies and after curricular activities and stuff. But you'd be surprised at how much time some of these kids will spend on it. And what might take me 10 minutes to learn, these kids can learn in one minute. It's really amazing. So, yep. Yep, the timing is another thing. It's not natural at first, you know, and keeping your arm moving and all that stuff. It's, it's real important. And that's where a good teacher will come in. Because if you're playing what I call the standard folk groove like this, like, you know, if you're playing like that, it's not going to ever feel right. You, you've got to keep. My arm keeps moving. So help me remember that we got G, C, and I guess D chord done with the chord embellishments. Um, I'll do A and E, and then we'll start talking about minor chords. And then we'll start talking. We'll start talking about riffs. I'm kind of throwing it all in there. Like you're getting a little bit of riffs and a little bit of fills, and you're getting all that stuff kind of thrown in there. But um, yeah, the the timing thing is is a really it's one of those things where you, you know some people may never get it. I I you know you may not ever get the, how to groove or whatever. I think everybody can technically learn it. I guess maybe there are people that like are tone deaf like they are with melodies, like they could never sing a melody. Like my dad was tone deaf, he couldn't sing a melody. My stepdad was tone deaf, he couldn't sing in key. Um, but uh, is that a P90 Les Paul on the wall? Well, kind of, yeah. Um, I'll, I'll pull that down in a second. Um, and um, according to your advent, you've already eaten all the candy. <laughs> Pepper's already eating all the candy. It's tomorrow's Christmas. Merry Christmas. It's all gone. <laughs> uh, you used to practice 15 hours a day. What? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's those are that's the long hours. You might want to you might want to practice a little less so you can sleep and rejuvenate. Um, but. Um, yeah, it's it's weird because there are some people that are tone deaf, right? You can't carry a, a they can't find. I could I've worked with them. I've said sing this note ah, and they like ah ah, and they're like no ah ah, you know they can't find it. I go okay, slide up and stop when you get there. Ah, you know they don't ever hear it. They just can't hear it. And there may be some people that have the tone deaf equivalent of rhythm not being able to play in rhythm i don't know i'm not saying you do i'm just saying 
you know, some people, I, I, if there's something like that, you could, you could work 24 hours a day and never, ever get it. Um, so that, yeah, working with a teacher might not be a bad idea. You know, uh, again, jamming with others, you could, you could, in 15 hours, you would get less than one hour with jamming with another guitar player. Uh, particularly one that's better than you, but it doesn't have to be better. It can be, hey, it's funny because you can have guitar players at different levels, but like they, they all know different stuff. So it's like, this guy may know something that this guy doesn't know. And I say guy, I mean all <laughs> unisex, male or female. But this person may know something that this person doesn't know. And it's like, oh, wait, what did you just do? It's like, oh, I did this. And they, you know, this person gets a little better because of it. And this person's like, well, what did you just do? Oh, I did, I did this. And they go, oh, okay, cool, thanks. And, you know, it's not a competition. You're, try, you're trying to lift everybody up. Um, and, uh, you know, you may just do the blues and practice soloing. And that's a whole other thing because soloing it requires you to have kind of an imagination and to be able to hear melodies and think of something that wasn't there before. Um, and, oh, did I? Yeah, I did pin the Discord link. Thanks, thanks Bruce. So, oh, yeah, the, 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 uh, it's an Epiphone. And technically it's a, it's like an Epiphone that my daughter decorated. <laughs> so I, I got this for 80 bucks and it was matte black and, um, Went to high school with a guy named Matt Black, um, and uh, she just put all sorts of fun stuff on it. You know, uh, let's see. Looks, it looks like a Beatles album cover, right? It says "I love you" on it. You see that? Can you see "I love you"? See the kitty cat, and the faces, and the hair, and the mustaches, side faces, even the face hit uh, up here, right there. See that face there? I mean, forget the artist that I used to love looking at his pictures because you would find all sorts of crazy things in it. But yeah, that's really cool, huh? But I have it tuned high strung, so technically, it's technically right now, it's high strung. Yeah, I love high strung because you can create those type voices you get on piano that you can't get on guitar. So high strung tuning is still E D G A B E, but it's the the bottom four strings are. Um, oh, <laughs> Catherine's like in trouble now. Uh, the oops, my camera. Hello, camera, get me in focus. It's because I walked away. It's so weird. Come on, camera. I gotta, I gotta finish up anyway. I got work to do. I'm supposed to be writing for this movie, and I haven't done a thing yet. Got some ideas, but okay. Why are you not? Boop. There we go. All right. Um. So, um. Yeah. That's is, is, but jamming with others is such a great, a great thing, and it's it's sometimes hard to do, you know. But you find the find people. But you just never know. You you know you just go to guitar center, go to a guitar store, and you strike up a conversation with somebody buying a guitar. And if you if you hit it off with them, then you know. If you, uh, and I think it's harder for women to do. Obviously, um, you got to be careful. But um, strike up a conversation, find someone to jam, jam with. You can jam, if you can find another woman guitar player to play with, then that would be good too. Um, but there's also like, um, I know, uh, in fact, Brad has a jam session, uh, every so often. And it's just, you know, there'll be guitar players and bass players and drummers and keyboard players and everybody showing up and we just jam and we just start, somebody starts a song and we keep, we just all add to it. So I've, I've gone to a couple of those. Um, and, um, another friend of mine has one at a church and they just, the church lets them use like the basement and gosh, there must've been 20, no, there's probably 12 guitar players there one guy brought a bass 
Somebody brought a mandolin, somebody else brought a banjo, but and they're just playing Beatles songs. They, they actually had books, songbooks. The, the guy that was in charge of it put together songbooks, and everybody had the music in front of them. Now, again, it was just basic things, and then they would sometimes go around, everybody take a solo or whatever. Um, you know, there were just Beatles songs or Buffalo Springfield or Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young or whatever. Um, it was kind of, the guys were mostly older. There were some young kids there, too. Um, diff, uh, the range of ability was pretty wide, and it, it got wider when I showed up. <laughs> I'm such an egomaniac. <laughs> but, yeah, so, like, the range was here, and then I show up, and it's here. <laughs> no, actually, there was a guy, another guitar player that was pretty good. I was pretty impressed. Uh, but for the gen, for the most part, they're just, you know, speaking of hacks, they were just kind of hacks. They're just like, oh, we just, they have fun. And that's the key, Michael. You know, the thing is, if, you, if, you're, if your aspirations are so high, you're never going to reach them. You're never going to enjoy picking up the guitar. So, you, and I don't mean to say don't have aspirations. I'm just saying be happy with the small victories and maybe get out and play in front of people. And you might find that, uh, you know, because there's only room in the world for one Eric Johnson. So you're not going to be the next Eric Johnson. Uh, there's only one Eric Johnson. You might be the next Michael, but um, there's not. Um, <laughs> I hope the room get better. I don't know about that. Uh, I can't even hear myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I try, um, but yeah. So when you're when you're jam, you know, um, when you're trying to ex get better on the instrument, you know, again, the two things you want to have is the fight of discouragement and encourage yourself to pick up the instrument. Those are two things that will help you get better. Um, and then I have, you know, then there's theoretical and musicality things and playing tricks and tips and stuff like that that come after that but but the main thing is just you know pick it up and if you're trying to be the next Derek Johnson yeah I, I would I would totally be discouraged I Derek Johnson discouraged me I mean I, I would I heard him when I discovered Eric Johnson back in the 80s I was like wait what actually I discovered Eric Johnson back in 1979 and I was like oh my goodness that guy is good <laughs> he Believe it or not, he's on the Christopher Cross record, the first Chris Rock Cross, Christopher Cross record that had Ride Like the Wind and Sailing on it. He's on a song called Minstrel Gigolo. And uh, there are great guitar players on that record. There's Jay Graydon and, and uh, Larry Carlton, and, and Christopher Cross does the solo on Ride Like the Wind. He's a very good guitar player. But then this kid named Eric Johnson played the guitar solo on uh, Minstrel Gigolo, and... Uh, keep in mind, Christopher Cross was from Austin, Texas, I believe, and that's where that's where, so they probably knew each other. They probably grew up together, um, and so that's like that was crazy to you know to hear to him hear him the first time and, and just like okay, I don't, I'm not even sure how he's playing some of this stuff, and it wasn't like flashy like Eddie Van Halen. It was more just as melodic ideas were not normal <laughs> so check it out it's a great solo it's probably the best solo on the record at the time i didn't think so at the time i was like oh i love steve you know i love jay graden solo or i love eric clapton or uh, sorry um uh, larry carlton solo but um anyway hey joseph sorry um a few years back yeah i don't know if it was well i guess it was probably 21 the beginning of 21 we did the bluegrass thing um so, okay, I'm going to take off. I got to get some work done. Um, yeah, yeah, even recording, yeah, even the recording artist doesn't replicate it live. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, never try to play exactly like the recording. In fact, one of my, somebody gave me the tip a long time ago was don't study the player, study the players that influence the player. So, for example, I could sound more like George Benson if instead of trying to emulate George Benson, I tried to emulate Wes Montgomery, Charlie Christian, and Django Reinhardt because those were his biggest influences. And so it was like, oh, I understood George Benson better and I was able to play more like George Benson because I understood, I kind of gave myself the same education he had in a micro way. Um, so that's... Um,
Yeah, that's yeah, and th so that's something you, Michael, you you just you just you know, it's that's a that's a mental shift that has to happen. You have to change your focus or your emphasis, and um, you know, I have a friend who's actually a really good guitar player. He loves playing campfires and just. Like he knows every song front to back. You know, he's the guy that doesn't, he was the guitar player that didn't frustrate everybody because he could play every song from start to finish. Um, and that's a great thing. But like I said, most of the great guitar players weren't that guy. They weren't the guy that everybody, that got his satisfaction from just sitting around a campfire and, ha and accompanying a bunch of friends singing. That's the most fun thing in the world I've ever, you know, the, of all the things I do, that's some of the most fun times I've ever had playing guitar. But that's not going to make me a guitar player. It's, it's that dissatisfaction with like, okay, I got that. Now let me move on to the next thing. That constant dissatisfaction and the constant wanting to get better. The thing that's maybe not making you happy is the very thing that's going to drive you to be the best you could be. However, you know, the happiness thing is you could be the best guitar player in the world and there is no measure of that. There's no way to know that. You could be the best guitar player in the world and still be miserable and completely unhappy. Your happiness is not tied to your guitar ability at all. <laughs> like you like you just pointed out so uh your happiness has to be something more outside of you and your abilities and as a christian i know where my happiness comes from uh but I, that's not what this channel is for so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna evangelize or preach necessarily uh, i just live my life uh at least in this milieu <laughs> so thank you bruce holly dennis thank you Dennis, I just now noticed you there. You've been there the whole time. Oh, Jake. It better not be Jake, Jacob Collier. <laughs> Jacob Collier? No. I mean, you may be Jacob. Okay, I'm glad you found me too. Jacob Collier, 1701. Nice. All right. Uh, what did I miss? <laughs> Well, we're really rooting for uh, Ohio, the Ohio State, or yeah, <laughs> University of Ohio. What is it Ohio State? Yeah, no, I'm kidding. We're not. Somebody is, but, um, but apparently Michigan may have to face Ohio again, so that'll be exciting. See if o Ohio can figure them out. Um, okay, <clears throat> and that won't happen until January. It seems like forever. I don't like that. That college. I think all those games should be done before Christmas. The college thing, the, the bowl game should be done. They be, should be going on right now. I, it that makes no sense to me that you wait until January to do that because those teams are six weeks off. It, it makes zero sense. I, I I don't I don't know what they're doing. I mean, maybe when they go to the sixteen game thing, if they go to I mean sixteen team thing, then they'll have to start in December, and then have the final game, you know, on January first or something. I don't know. Tradition is one thing, but so thank you, Holly. Well, and, and Michael, you, uh, UPB Michael, you know, being a good guitar player and being a working guitar player, I've, I, one of my best guitar players in the world has the word hack in his, you know, one of my friends is one of the best guitar players. He has the word hack in his email address because he thinks he's a hack. You know, it, it, what, what I do, because I do guitar for a living, what I do is I'm a session guitar player, so I play lots of instruments and lots of styles and lots of things that I can do all that, but I'm not a master at any of them. I'm just, I'm passable on a lot of styles and some I'm way down here. Um, but uh, I make a living at it. And part of the way I designed my career was that, you know, I'm working on projects where y you can't tell if someone's a master, you know, the, the I can play anything um, at any level, but I couldn't necessarily improvise that at any level. So, um, you know, not, I wouldn't say necessarily any level, but I've never had a problem, you know, some, and that's, I, that's a great thing from working at home. I've, I've, I've got something that's very difficult. I may have to punch in every bar and get, you know, it may take me a while to get the passage down. Um, it's whether it's on oud or lute or banjo or ukulele or balalaika or whatever, or guitar, um, I'll eventually figure it out and get it down if it's playable. If it's not playable, then I let the composer know and then he has to rewrite it. But I don't, that, that doesn't happen very often. Um, so, um, anyway, I'm going to take off. I got some work to do. Uh, we'll see you next Monday, Lord willing, and we'll continue on this subject. We may all be on this subject for quite a while. Uh, so today we talked about chord embellishments for, uh, the C chord, the G chord, the D chord. 
I may do a little more on the D chord, and then we may move on to A and E, and then maybe hit some minor chords and stuff. And again, I'm throwing in fills and riffs as we go. So um, we're talking about all of the, those three different elements to rhythm playing. This is all, we're talking about rhythm playing. Um, and again, Michael, that's something you want to prioritize. Nobody wants to jam with a guy that's just going to solo the whole time. You're not going to get in a band if you just want to solo the whole time. The singer wants, you got to figure out a way that you're going to be in a band and get better faster in a band, always. That you're supporting the lead singer. The lead singer is your boss. You got to make your boss look good. What makes him look good? What can you do? Turn down. <laughs> you can hear yourself, that's fine. You know, turn down. Because he, if he can't hear himself, he's not going to look good. So anyway, those are very, it's, that's a whole nother lesson series. Oh, uh, the church jam session, uh, well, it's not at Shepherd, and it's, I'm not part of it. It was, I can't even remember what church that was at. It was just somebody I know that did one, and I went to it once just to say hey, and um, I, yeah, I don't know. Maybe look on Craigslist and see if there's something on, I know Craigslist, <laughs> the connotation, it's going to be like you're going to be murdered, <laughs> but it's not. It's not, no, it's not called Good Shepherd Church. It's just called Shepherd Church, but it's not there, Bruce. Um, I can't remember. I, it might have been Emmanuel Church in Burbank. Um, and I don't even know if it would be on the church website or it was just something that, uh, and I don't remember who asked me to go to it. Um, it might be something you just have to know somebody at. But here's the deal, Dan. If, if there isn't one, um, you know, where you are or whatever, see if you can organize one. Um, a lot of churches will let you use their facilities for things. Shepherd might, you know, I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't, I don't have any pull over there. So, um, I just play guitar, but you could, you know, a lot of churches let, you know, people use the facilities for, uh, for gatherings and things like that. And, um, uh, you know, I, you know, I think they had coffee and donuts, you know, somebody brought coffee and donuts, which was cool, but yeah. So 